too. <laughs> Thank you, Christy and the team. So beautiful. Last night, as I was looking at little scratchy notes, things I've jotted here and there, um, you think, oh, Lord, help. <laughs> you ever feel like that? Yeah. So you all be asking the Lord, oh, Lord, help her. <laughs> But when I think about our initial time together like this, and we'll go on and hear Tim and Dutch and looking forward to what the Lord will bring through them. And then thinking about what I might share, I thought really what I want to share is just encouragement that uh, I, I know sometimes you can feel that you're out in the field working hard and perhaps you don't always see the fruit you want to see or maybe you're too busy or there's just different things that come along in life and in ministry that um, can cause us to feel a look inward from time to time and as I was looking at notes last night and looking at uh, reports that Kay has given me and Joan who works with the international um, field and thinking also of our U.S. field and all that God has done these 55 years it's amazing it is amazing and I was thinking about the theme. Hope I've got the theme right. <laughs> I tell you, it was midnight. Things we know, is that right? <laughs> I remember sitting around the board table at the office and we were thinking about this conference and uh, I didn't mean this in any kind of a smart aleck way, but just thinking of the number of years we have walked together and learned together. And, and so probably this silly comment came out of my mouth like, well, you know, we've learned some things. And I didn't mean it in a haughty way. I just meant as we walk, as we walk with him, as we walk with one another, we've learned some things. I think back to the precious early days of Aglow. I wasn't one of the original four. Uh, but I was in the early stages of the ministry. And someone mentioned last night that they uh, were friends with Bernice Smith. I don't know how many of you recall Bernice, but she had the vision for starting Aglow International. Her husband was very involved with full gospel businessmen. They were very active around the world, really, but uh, in the Seattle area particularly, and she wanted something for women. So she stepped out in faith. I attended a meeting in her home where they were talking about, you know, we, we could just kind of dreaming, floating ideas. And um, for some reason, I don't know what happened, but I agreed to oversee a group in Edmonds, Washington. And Edmonds is just north of Seattle. It's on the waterfront of uh, Puget Sound. It's a beautiful little community. So we held our first meeting at the Edmonds Yacht Club. And we didn't know if we'd have 20 but we had about 350. 
And from that point on, uh, things just began to happen in our little community, at least. And I remember attending the first international conference, and um, I'm dating myself, but I'm proud to do so because this ministry and people that were chatting together yesterday were saying, this ministry, now we're not, we're not worshiping a glow, we worship Jesus. And Jesus is the life changer. But he has used a glow in, in so many of our lives to bring healing, deliverance, wholeness, He's healed marriages. He's, he's raised up an entity in the earth that he is using in this hour. Uh, and particularly as we think about the third day and moving into, I don't know if we've moved into it, we're going to move into it, Tim will tell you. <laughs> but we, we've been told that a glow will be used in that third day movement. So when there are times that you think, mm, I'm tired, or the enemy brings that thought of, well, is God through with the glow? Well, take a look around the room. Amen. Amen. And you've got your answer. He's not through. Think of the word legacy. Um, when I think about things that we know, it makes me think about the word legacy. And legacy means something uh, that has been passed on by a predecessor or an ancestor. It's something from the fa uh, past that has been brought forward. And the theme of this conference is we know. And we know because we've learned some things along the way. 55 years of ministry and 172 nations later. We started with four women, you know the story. Four women, Bernice was one of those women. They just kind of, well I guess it wouldn't be correct, they just stumbled into this because God was helping them stumble along. But in that sense they did kind of just stumble into this and the Holy Spirit quickened it with life, and soon there were groups popping up in the northwest portion of the United States and going across our nation and around the world. So, as I just said, currently Aglo is in 172 nations, and we just, I want to assure you, we think of you often, we pray for you often, we mention you often, uh, reports that come in from the office. Uh, we, Joan shares with excitement with us and we have our staff meetings every Tuesday. I'm just like, well, what do you know today? And what, what's happening in the world? And it's, it's just, uh, to tell you the truth, we still stand in awe. We stand in awe. Yeah at what God has done and is choosing to continue to do and has stated you will be used in this third great awakening so stay on your toes stay on your spiritual toes be aware of what I'm saying and what I'm doing and personally I feel like it's not something we can plan for it's something that will unfold and we'll step into it. We won't be afraid because we've walked the way of the Spirit and we will easily step into the new thing God is doing. I'm excited about that. We've had some changes along the way. That's life. We've seen changes in the world, culturally, economically, atmospherically. 
We're currently hearing the word pandemic, that we've experienced a pandemic that has changed the world. It's destroyed some businesses. It's hurt the supply chain. There are other changes in the world as well, the rising tensions in China and Russia. And from Russia, we're hearing nuclear threats, reading daunting headlines. If you listen to the news, you're aware of the situation in Ukraine and the suffering that those people are experiencing. My heart breaks for the evil in the world that is put upon innocent people who then suffer. And the evil people seem to go free. We know there'll be a cost, but as I just observe the world, I pray, don't you? I pray for the hearts and the lives that are being damaged or touched or broken or little children that don't have enough food, go to bed hungry. It's heartbreaking to me. Here in the United States, midterm elections are upon us this next week. We have a new prime minister in Great Britain. And we have a female prime minister in Italy. <laughs> this one got me, but with the passing of Queen Elizabeth II, I felt a sorrow, I felt a sadness. I also felt a shift. That certain tent pegs of security, things that have always been in place, things you could always look to and count on or whatever would conjure up in our mind, they represented something to us and they're being shaken and moved. And with King Charles III, he is unknown in many ways. He's known in some ways. <laughs> but there always will come the testing of a leader. When a new leader steps into place, there'll be a testing of that leader. So we need to be praying for King Charles. I think of our own border crisis here in the United States. I think of Iran and their saber rattling. I think of what began with a glow with these four women and yes it was initially to start groups where women could fellowship together and have something akin to what the men were enjoying but over the years while a glow is well known for evangelism I would say we are equally well known as a prayer movement. Amen. Yes. You can clap. Yes. Perhaps initially our prayers were about me, myself, and I, and my four, and no more. <laughs> But a glow has taught us the amazement of really
praying with God for the nations of the world and the peoples of the world. And someone said to me yesterday, only heaven will reveal the fruit. And again, I don't mean this in a haughty way for a glow, but only heaven will reveal what this ministry has birthed or helped supported or encouraged along the way. I was telling Tony last night, if I couldn't sleep, I didn't want him to sleep. <laughs> uh, but it, it's interesting when you think of the perfection of the Lord, he could have brought forth a glow at any point in history, but he chose this time in history with Russia doing its thing and China making its declarations and so many, uh, so much movement in the earth. And 55 years ago, he thought that was a good time. He planted a globe. He let us go through our, finding our way and coming to this point in history where we send prayer teams into Washington, D.C. every month, every month, I think it's for the last 12 years, we have had a prayer team walking the streets of Washington, D.C. There have been prayer journeys around the world. In fact, I was thinking of, oh, I can't get this. I was thinking of uh, a journey that, do you remember Elaine Keith from Ohio? Yeah. Thank you. Is she here? Uh, Elaine Keith and I took a trip through Beijing and met with uh, our people there. And then we went into Mongolia to, uh, neither of us had been to Mongolia before, but it was a time when uh, just the hovering of the Holy Spirit was there and a glow was brought forth at that time. I don't, I don't know how it's continuing today, but as Linda said, once a glow has been planted in a nation or a city, we believe that the presence and the movement of the spirit that God intended through that ministry will continue. Take your drink. So a glow has been used as a catalyst for prayer around the world. We've seen renewal amongst women, but because women have gotten renewed and gotten their focus off of themselves and onto the Lord and onto God's business, it's made some changes in our homes. So we're no longer, and I mean this in a respectful way, in a right way, we're not looking to our husbands to give us life. We're looking to Jesus to give us life. Therefore, we can live in right relationship with the men that we love. We've had materials published, prayer helps, materials with evangelism, uh, Janet Mangum is here with us who oversees evangelism and she just came home, I believe, from the Philippines. Uh, we have Tessie, our leader there in the Philippines, and a glow has thrived in that part of the world as it has in many Asian nations. Alice Soy from Hong Kong, 
uh, oh, so many that I could name this morning, I think blocks, <laughs> uh, continents, Europe, Asia, North America, South America, Central America, there's a glow in every part of the earth. Yeah. Just look in here where I want to. Turn to next. I think of a scripture that I shared with Tony last night. I don't know how you pronounce it, but Habakkuk. Look among the nations and watch. You will be utterly astounded. For I will work a work in your days which you would not believe even if I told you. That's us. Then it says, I will stand my, uh, stand my watch, set myself on the rampart, and watch to see what he will say to me. Write the vision, make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. And then over in verse 14, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. I think of myself as a young girl. I was probably eight years old, maybe 10. My father was a pastor in Ohio at that point, in Akron. People have said to me, you're part of your father's legacy. We're all part of our father's legacy. <laughs> But I, I really was a daddy's girl. I love my mom. We were great friends. But you know, girls have a special connection with their fathers. And my father was from Belfast, Ireland. And he responded to the call of the Lord as an evangelist came through Belfast. My father had been in the Presbyterian church all of his life. But he said, I heard the gospel for the first time. And in this reserved Northern Ireland church, this evangelist didn't let them quietly accept Jesus as their savior. He said, if, you, if you've heard a word today and you accept Jesus as your savior, I want you to stand to your feet and shout it out one at a time. <laughs> and my father was one of those men. I listened intently to him as he spoke each Sunday. He was a studier. He loved to read. He was a good friend of Dr. Tozer's. If you know Dr. Tozer, you know the quality of his ministry, and they were quite close friends. In fact, Dr. Tozer's mother and sisters were part of my dad's congregation. I was captivated, captivated by the anointing. I was a young girl who stumbled imperfectly through life, from Ohio to Los Angeles to Berkeley. <laughs> I lived in Berkeley 25 years. My dad had a church there. And then to Seattle. 
In Seattle, I ended up in the middle of a powerful move of God's Holy Spirit. I was hungry. I know what Bob mentioned. You're hungry for something, and you're looking, and you're seeking, and you're trying. And somebody mentioned Father Dennis Bennett at St. Luke's in Ballard and that there was a powerful move. He had come from Los Angeles, a powerful move of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And I thought, well, that's really different, but <laughs> I'll give it a go. <laughs> no, I wanted to hear. I wanted to sense with my spirit. So some friends and I traveled to, wasn't far, 30 minutes to Ballard to hear Father Dennis Bennett speak and to hear how his life had been transformed. Found out he just lived down the block from me and he and his wife Rita, we became friends. We often had meals together. It was an interesting period in my life where I felt like the Lord was just almost spoon feeding me and feeding me to overflowing. There was such a hunger in those days. It's the hunger that drove you. It's the hunger that made you vulnerable. You, you say anything, ask anything, because you were like a hungry child. You still awake? <laughs> Thank you. As I looked at, at notes last night, I thought, there, there's a lot of history here. And you may be thinking, well, I want the word of the Lord. But as I kept looking at the notes, I thought, this history really is part of the journey that God has chosen to have us on as a ministry. He chose our timing. He chose our placement all over the world. And he chose how this would be fleshed out. So let me just share a couple of facts with you. And thanks to Kay, she looked up much of this for me. In 1989, the Aglo Conference, I'm not sure where it was held, but you may remember this. This is when East Germany and West Germany brought the flag in together, holding hands, and the place went up in a roar. The reunification of Germany. It was a time when the World Wide Web was invented, the fall of the Berlin Wall. And I, I stood at the Berlin Wall just months after we'd gone through Checkpoint Charlie earlier when you couldn't get through any place else. But then I had the privilege of being there when it was open. Nelson Mandela was freed after 27 years imprisonment in South Africa. 91 to 95 was the Persian Wolf, uh, Gulf War. And it was in 91 that a glow received the thread word. Do you remember the thread word? that God would put a thread in our hand that would begin to draw in and knit together uh, people in the Islamic system. He was gonna open doors for us and make it possible for us to reach into people caught in that system and that they would be um, 
the system would be exposed, the flaws in the system, and they would come out of a false system to know the only true God. We've seen it happen. Women's Aglow Fellowship became Aglow International in the year 2000. We took our first trip into Israel. In fact, maybe it was in the late 90s that I felt like the Lord said to me, you will be in and out of Israel in the next many years. I didn't have a clue what that meant. Uh, I'd been to Israel one time. I didn't even get goosebumps while I was there. <laughs> but he was to do a transforming work in my heart. For Israel, the land, the people and it remains to this day. So we took a group of, it was quite a large group actually, into Israel and we began walking the streets, praying. We weren't obnoxious, we were careful. Uh, the streets were empty. It was during the second intifada. We had people say, what are you women doing here? <laughs> because it was during the intifada, one of the intifadas, and um, it was a time that God was planting something in our hearts that would go deep and remain deep for the land and for the people and for the purposes of God to totally be fulfilled. We have continued to go to Israel, I think just about every year, except maybe the last year or two because of uh, the pandemic. But we continue to go every year and we will continue to go until the Lord says, enough already. <laughs> In 2003, we received a word, I think it was from Barbara Yoder. I just talked to her about a week ago. That a glow is unplugged from its past and rewired for the future. In 2004, Dutch Sheets was one of our speakers. And he spoke out of Isaiah 22:22, 22, 22, where it says, I give you the key. Do you remember Dutch saying, I give you the key, I give you the key, I give you the key. Amen. That will open doors that no man can shut and will shut doors that no man can open. That's a word to walk in. In 2000, I think it was 2010, Mike Bickle spoke to us. I re remember him on the platform leaning over to me and he's saying, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> he said, I never, I don't travel, I don't go speak other places, but when you invited me, I knew I was to come. Mike's got a funny sense of humor. I don't know what I'm doing here. Well, I do. <laughs> One of the things he said was, wherever a glow is, the water level rises. 
Tuck that away in your heart, because that's a now word. Wherever a glow is, you can be in a big city, you can be a, in a city of 100 people, but the word of the Lord is that wherever a glow is, the water level rises, and you're part of that. Asher and Trader, remember Asher, our friend from Israel. He called a glow to become a company of Marys. Do you remember this word? Who partner with the armies of heaven to usher in the return of Christ. That's a now word. That's a now word. These words are living still. And we need to look for ways that he is unfolding them. I mentioned the strategic prayer trips into DC every month. We're serious about prayer and we realize that probably the primary call on a glow is related to prayer. Yes, it's evangelism and prayer. But prayer takes a different kind of makeup. And I feel that at this conference, he wants us to know that's not a call that was for back then. He's ramping it up. I've heard even at this conference that there are people who have Wednesday morning prayer calls, conference calls. Uh, you don't have to have a prayer meeting at your house, serve coffee and tea and get on a Zoom call. Conference calls, get praying because God's called us to it and he's called us for such a time as it's important. I have no idea what time it is, but I think it's time to wrap it up. In the mid 2000, let's say 2015, um, identity is the key to transformation, which was new leadership development, uh, a program that was developed out of life changers and game changers. We're grateful to Graham Cook for really just releasing his material to us. And I'm still in touch with Graham. He was not able to be here this time, but I, did I speak or did we text last week? So um, we're all still friends. <laughs> just, just the fact that you don't see them here each time doesn't mean anything. He's, he's a dear friend. It was also at this period of time that I had an interesting, and you'll remember this story. This is kind of a review today, isn't it? One was in Hong Kong. I was sitting in a coffee shop and I was facing this direction, Tony was here, and I saw a man in a couple booths down and he kept looking out after a while, he'd look out again, and I thought, what in the world? What's he looking at? And long story short, pretty soon he came up to the table. And he said, I don't know who you are. Never seen you before. But the Lord told me to come and tell you you're important in the kingdom. Amen. 
It's not important like, well, here I am. <laughs> it was the sense that what he has called us to is of great importance yes. to God. Yes. And he had me in, what did I say, Hong Kong and some guy in another booth come and tell me, just as like, just so you don't forget, and be sure you go tell your people. And then there was a Pakistani man. I don't remember where we were. But he uh, came up to us on the street. And again, I mean, this is odd. This doesn't happen. But in essence, he said the same thing. I don't know who you are, but uh, he didn't appear, he didn't seem to be a Christian, but he wanted to relay the message that whatever we were doing was really important and keep doing it. God has funny ways of letting you know. <laughs> yeah. Think back to the last few years. Time marches on. Things are changing. Billy Graham died at age 99. That was a loss. Queen Elizabeth passed away her 70th year as queen, one of the longest reigning monarchs in British history and the second longest reigning monarch in world history. She died at age 96 in 2022. Do you watch when things like that happen? Something is shifting. Yes. Things that have been in place, it's changing. And he wants us to keep a hearing ear and a seeing eye. He wants us not in an anxious way, but on tiptoe, like, speak, Lord. Interestingly, I've had this happen twice, I guess in the last month or two. I told you about it, Tony. I, um, mm -hmm. I uh, was awakened out of a sound sleep. And the entire ceiling of the bedroom was filled with angels. I just laid there quietly, watching. They weren't talking. The room was filled. After a while, I must have fallen asleep or they went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but a few nights later, I was awakened again and there were three angels. This time I said, after a long quietness, is there anything you want to say? No answer. Just a peaceful quietness. Something is happening. And I don't mean this in a demanding way, but in an expectant way. Let's expect or look for things to come to us that would be meaningful in our lives. 
He's, I believe the Holy Spirit is stirred in a new way. I don't know if that's even right language, and my pastor's here. <laughs> but he is stirred in a way that I sense, I sense a newness and excitement and expectancy. Uh, and it isn't that I go to bed every night looking for angels. We focus on Jesus. But when they show up in your room, <laughs> you know, you, you at least need to say hello. <laughs> Things are happening, people. You know, in, in, we're heavenly beings. We're redeemed. We live on earth but our home is in heaven. Amen. So it should not seem odd to us that heaven would visit us from time to time. Yeah. Well, I don't know where I am. Maybe it's just time to say amen. I'll close with this. Maybe I've already said this. The third day, I know I've said it at other conferences. I know I've said it in letters. It's like we've entered a third day season. Expect some things to be different. Good, but different. Don't be afraid. Never be afraid. Be expected. Dan Juster, you know Dan? I love Dan and Patty. And I've shared this with you before, but I want to share it again today. He said, we believe that a glow has a wonderful and profound calling in the last days leading up to the return of the Lord. Do you believe that? That means you're a part of that. So expect things to shift and change. I've seen things that I've long prayed for begin to shift and change. And it isn't because of a greater effort on my part. Something has shifted in heaven Things are on the move. I know with everything in me, and again, I'm not bragging on a glow, it's kind of not my style, but I do know with everything that is within me, that he has called us for this time and there will be an upping of what comes, of your equipping, of his expectation, his everything. So don't be surprised. Don't think, you know, I've gotten a little older. I think uh, retirement sounds good. Forget about it. 
forget about it. <laughs> we're kingdom people. We're in it to win it, and we're in it to the end. I'm going to close with about five Shirley statements, like Shirley he is, not Shirley down the street. <laughs> Here's a good one. Shirley he is faithful. Surely he always, say always, always, makes a way where there is no way. Surely he heals us of impossible situations. It's impossible for you to have an impossible situation. Okay. He, surely he restores us in every situation. He's more than enough. Surely he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Oh, I love that. Surely he gives us beauty for ashes. He heals all our disease. He sets a path before us. Surely he is our breakthrough. Yes. He sustains me. Yes. His truth, his love, his strength is new every morning. I needed that this morning. <laughs> Surely he is a peacemaker who brings calm into chaos. Yes. Surely the Lord will help me in every situation. Yes. Amen. Christy, you have a Shirley song? <laughs> I'm looking for one. Okay, you look, I'll pray. <laughs> Lord, we thank you. that surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. You didn't play a guessing game with us. You told us how it would be, that we could expect his goodness and mercy to be there every single day of our lives. He wants to honor himself through you. Set aside the negative stuff. And begin to say what heaven says. The redeemed of the Lord say so. That's what we need to do. Because the more the heat comes, <laughs> Guess what? It can go the other way, too. My pastor's here. I hope this isn't wrong to say. <laughs> Let hell fill your heat. Yeah. The heat of heaven. Yeah. Say it with your mouth. Sing it from your heart. Whistle it as you walk through the house. Make the pronouncement of the Lord every day. He is good. <laughs>